So Annika sent us this question. Hi, here is a picture of a girl that I've taken in sunset. Can you please tell me what could I do in Photoshop to improve the image look? Hi there, this is Anmesh from Pix Imperfect and welcome to another episode of Ask Pix. I know it's been a long while, but today we're going to be helping Annika and let's see how far we go. If you want to send in your question, check the link in the description for the details. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop and thank you so much Annika for sending this beautiful photo and this is such an adorable girl, brings a smile to your face. Alright, I think the only problem here is, she has a beautiful skin tones, she's adorable for sure. The only problem here is the white balance. The white balance might not be set properly in the camera, so we can easily fix that, it's not a big issue. If you're working with a raw image, it's even better because then you can retain all the details. And white balance is something that you can fix in post very easily. So with the background layer selected, press Ctrl or Command J, all right? And we can name this White Balance Fixed, all right? Let's go to Filter and then Convert for Smart Filters, why? So that whatever filter we apply, we can change the values later and you might have already guessed what filters we're gonna apply. So let's go to Filter and then Camera Raw Filter. Now you could have done the same thing in Lightroom when you import your raw photos or even in Photoshop when you import your raw photos it imports in camera raw and right there and then you can do that but since this is a JPEG we're going to be using the camera raw filter all right let's zoom in and all you got to do you can correct the temperature manually from here now we only have to pick and click on an area which should have been neutral preferably 50 percent gray but in this case we can say and we know that the eye whites should have been neutral there should not have been any color cast right so we're going to use this tool right there called the white balance tool the shortcut is i so let's go ahead and select that and we will try clicking right here and have a look it's fixed that's all we had to do now on top of that you can just work on these sliders but in this case you're just going to do some minimal adjustments probably let's increase the contrast a little bit and set it to about 28 that's fine we want a little more shadows so let's decrease that as well just a touch we don't have to do so much in here and we can leave it at that we can do the rest of the adjustments later hit okay and most of your problems are now solved. Now on top of that, you can do a lot of things. Want me to experiment? Let's do a few things. The first thing I feel we need to do here is to add some dimension, which means making the dark areas of the face a little darker because it's looking a little flat with very less contrast. So click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves. Now the bright areas are perfectly bright. We don't have to touch them. So with the help of the hand right there, just click on the hand. Let's make a point on the bright area. So these are the bright areas. We're just gonna click and make a point. We don't wanna move that. Now in the dark areas, a little darker areas, we can just make a point and drag it down to our liking. Probably something like this, maybe a little more. It is looking pretty good. Press Ctrl or Command 0 to just fit it to the screen. Let's move it right here to the side so we can see what's happening. It's looking pretty darn good, isn't it? Now the only problem is it's also saturating the image too much. Too much saturation, too much color. Now there are two ways of correcting it. Number one is changing the blend mode simply to luminosity. That way it will not touch the colors and instantly if you have a look, it looks perfectly great. But usually, it desaturates it maybe too much and for skin tones it might be a little undesirable sometimes not all the times sometimes so the other method is let's set it back to normal is simply using a hue saturation adjustment layer so click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose hue saturation and we only want to target the reds only decrease the color which you think have oversaturated so in this case let's go to reds right there from the drop down and we want to capture all of reds. We want to target all of reds. So let's increase the range even to yellows a little bit. Increase the range on the left hand side as well. All of this. And simply decrease the saturation until it looks natural. So I'm going to keep it at about minus 15. Let's take a look. It looks pretty nice, isn't it? So here's the before. Very flat. And here is the after. We are getting closer. It's looking wonderful. On top of that, again, you can apply all kinds of plugins, filters. And one of my favorite plugins, and I've talked about it in previous video, is Luminar. I really like that. So let's go ahead and create a stamp visible layer at the top. So press Control, Alt, Shift, and E. This merges everything that you're seeing in the canvas in just one layer. All right, let's name this Luminar. And you can apply whatever is your favorite filter. You can again go to Camera Raw Filter and work with the sliders. Do whatever you want. It's up to you. You can apply a lot of curves. Alright, so I'm going to go to Filter, Convert for Smart Filters, because 
It also works with smart filters. Let's go to filter, Skylum software, Luminar 4. And by the way, if you're interested in getting Luminar, I have lots of great offers for you. So check the link in the description for that, or you can simply go to this link to get a discount on Luminar. And also, if you're not sure about Luminar, no problem. You can always download the trial version, try it for a whole 30 days and see if it is for you or not, and then move forward. No problem with that. So here we are on Luminar, and it has four tabs right here. Essential, creative, portrait and professional. The ones that we are interested in is portrait because we are working with the portrait. There's the skin enhancer that you can work with and you can increase to just remove the defects. But in this case, I love the freckles. We want to keep it. So we don't want to apply any of that thing. Let's go to AI portrait enhancer. There's red eye removal, eye whitening and all of that stuff right here. You can play with these sliders if you wish. But in this case, I don't think we need most of them because the portrait is perfect. Let's go down and maybe we might want to improve the eyebrows a little bit. It makes it slightly more visible. We can increase the lips saturation just a little bit. Lips redness. Then there's the high key effect, the Orton effect. We can try all of these. Maybe a little bit of Orton effect looks nice to it. Let's take a look. Here's the before. Here's the after. Just adds a little softness to it. Let's click on apply and we're going to leave it at that. Now let's add some warmth to it. Now one of my favorite ways of doing that is color lookup tables. So click on the adjustment icon and then choose color lookup. And there are some color lookup tables that we tend to use again and again, like crisp warm, edgy amber. In this case, let's go ahead and choose edgy amber. It just adds a golden tint to it, but we only want to apply it to the highlight. So double click on the right hand side of the layer. Take the slider of the underlying layer in the blend if section from left to right. We want to make the transition smoother. So hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on it to break it apart and take it all the way apart. Looks pretty nice. Hit OK. But of course, this is too much. Let's apply opacity of about 15. Just a touch of it. Here's the before, here's the after. Just a little touch makes it look exciting. Now, sometimes what happens is we overdo stuff and it begins to look a little too saturated. One of the color lookups that I like to kind of desaturate it a little bit and kind of dim down the colors a little bit in an artistic way. And that is, let's go to color lookup first. That is futuristic bleak right there. See how it dims down the color? Looks like it was shot with a very expensive cinema camera. But anyway, we don't want too much of it. Let's go for 20%, just a little bit. And it looks pretty much done, isn't it? Let's zoom in and check. There's one thing we need to do, and that is sharpening. Just a little bit of sharpening might bring in a little more. Now, there are lots of ways of sharpening. I've Tons of videos on that. You can check them out in the description. But recently, one of the plugins that I've been loving for sharpening is Ultra Sharp. It's actually brilliant because it creates no halos. Yes, sharpening without the halos. Previously, we had to do a lot of techniques and selections to kind of remove the halos. But right now, it's there's a very good plugin to do that. So first of all, create a stamp visible layer by pressing Control, Alt, Shift, and E. And then you can name this sharpen if you want to. Let's go to Window, Extensions and NBB Ultra Sharp. If you're interested in this, you can go to this link, pix.live slash sharpen. But you don't have to get this. If you are okay with Photoshop's own features, that's fine too. But the only reason I love this is because it doesn't create halos. So let's say you wanna just accentuate the small details. You can just increase small, and then it makes the small details sharp. Let's take a look. Here's the before, here's the after. Just the small details, and there are no halos. Even if you have zoomed in so much, you can see that there are no halos. Medium small details, you can increase them. Even more sharpening, no halos at all. Still now, no halos. Even in the nose edge, nowhere you will see halos. Large details, medium details, no matter whatever you accentuate, no halos. So let's go ahead and reset it. I was just showing it to you. So for this one, let's increase the medium large details a bit. Whenever you're sharpening, usually keeping it at 100% helps. Take a look, 100% right there. Now for this one, we're going to just increase the medium large a little bit. Let's see what it does. Just a little bit of sharpening, not too much. And then medium a little bit, just a touch. Too much sharpening might accentuate unnecessary details. And we can keep it at that. So here's the before, not much sharpening. And here is the after. It looks so better, isn't it? Now you can mask out the sharpening from the blurred out areas. One of the things we can do is just hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the mask button. This creates a negative mask. Then we can take a brush, white as the foreground color, soft round brush, and then just paint over the face with opacity and flow at 100. Just bring the sharpness over the face. That's pretty much it. And now time for the final showdown. Let's take a look at the before and after. Here is the before. And here is the after, my friends. 
Annika, I hope you like it. If you think this is too yellow, too green, too blue, you can always add some curves and adjust it as well. I'll send you this PSD, especially for Annika. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this one helps. And if you want to send in your question, you know what to do. Check the description for details and email address for sending in your awesome questions. I hope this video helped you. And if it did, make sure to give us a like. And also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would love to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for helping me keep Pix Imperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for watching again and I'll see you in my next one. Till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.